Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our Hornet and we're going to do an airfield takeoff and landing. So let's get straight on with it. We want to ensure that our flaps position is to half. We want to look at our FCS screen, menu, FCS, and check that our stabilizers are 12. We can uh, trim up and trim down to adjust that. Then we are going to hold on the brakes, spill up to millet, spool up to military power, uh, which is the maximum power before the afterburners come in. I usually treat that as about 95% on the RPM here. Then we can decide whether we're going to do a military power takeoff or a full burner takeoff. Usually I'd say if the plane is heavily loaded with bombs and whatnot, then you should use afterburner to take off. If it's um, either just loaded with fuel or with fuel and light stores then you can choose to take off with military power only if you prefer. So once we're at our desired thrust setting we'll then release the wheel brake. She'll start accelerating pretty quickly. We'll use our rudder axis to make sure we stay roughly on the center line of the runway. Then because our trim is set at 12 uh, stabilizer she's pretty much going to take off herself once she gets to about 130, 140, 150 knots. So we won't really need to introduce any back stick uh, unlike most planes we don't need to rotate um, if she hasn't taken off by about 140 145 then I'll just introduce a little bit of back stick just to help her up once we're up we've got a decent velocity and speed is 160 170 then I'm gonna put my gear up and I can put my flaps up to neutral then we're gonna come down to military power if we're already if we are on burner and we're gonna slowly accelerate to the circuit speed of 300 knots and altitude of 1,000 feet AGL our circuit will be a left hand circuit and then we'll go around for the landing. Uh, one thing to note, I've got nose wheel steering on here. I think you're supposed to turn that off for a Hornet landing but I just prefer to keep it on for the extra control I get. Right, brakes on. Spool up to 95. And release. Little bit of rudder. Straighten her out. So all we've got to do is keep her straight and neutral stick. She's wanting to pitch up already. Going to give her just a bit of a help with a tiny bit of back stick and we're up. And that's going to be gear up, flaps up to neutral, retrim her out. We're now going to turn left and get into a left circuit. I will report when we're back in the circuit. Just going to turn our radar altitude off, warning off so we don't get bugged. There we go. Okay, so we're on the downward now. We're at circuit speed of 300, uh, altitude of 1,000 thereabouts. Uh, so whenever we land or in vis good visual conditions like this, then we will be landing from a circuit. Uh, so we'll be coming downwind like this, and then we'll be turning a base turn into the final. And that base turn we're going to use to A, get our speed down to our approach speed, which we'll talk about in a minute. Also, we're going to use it to get the plane dirty. So we're going to get our gear out and our flaps down on that base turn. Now if you want to know a bit more about circuit landing circuits, we've got a tutorial on it in the educational general section. Regards the actual final descent itself, it's going to be more of a naval descent than a standard airfield descent. So it's going to be a, a little bit above the usual 3 degrees descent. And regards our speed, our speed is going to change depending on our weight. We're kind of relatively light at the moment. We've got about, I don't know, 70-80% gas and no external stores. And what we're going to do is use two instruments to ensure that we maintain the correct landing angle of attack for the entirety of the final approach until we touch down. We're going to use, be using our angle of attack director here. It's going to have a circle in the middle when we are on the correct landing angle of attack, which I think is just below 8 degrees. We've got a little a marker up here that's showing if our angle of attack is too high and we're going too slow. And a little arrow down here will show if our angle of attack is too low and therefore we're going too fast. As well as that, on our HUD, we're also going to have an angle of attack indicator in the shape of an E bracket that you've probably used when you've landed on a carrier. And the name of the game is to maintain a speed at which that E bracket includes encompasses the path vector here. If we can do that, then we know we're on a correct angle of attack. And that's essentially all we have to do. We have to ensure that we're on a correct angle of attack and ensure that this marker here is at the threshold of the runway all the time and just drive it, plow it into the runway at that angle of attack. Nothing else we have to worry about. We don't have to worry about our speed other than to maintain the correct angle of attack. 
to us just like how we land on an aircraft carrier so let's get on with it let's unpause we're going to stick as close to we can as circuit height a thousand feet agl we're going to extend about a mile we don't want to extend too far because then our approach will be too shallow and a naval approach is usually fairly steep in comparison so a little bit further Always checking over our shoulder to check our situation in comparison to the runway. We start turning there, off the power. Now as we start getting the plane dirty, uh, flaps down, gear out and whatnot, then the trim is going to change massively. So we just have to keep an eye on our path vector here, make sure it remains roughly in the centre. So we stay at circuit at altitude as best we can. We can have our first layer of flaps now. That's going to mess our trim up a lot, so just compensate accordingly. Two hundred gear can come out now. Lots more drag coming on. More compensation for the trim. Don't let speed go too far. If we want to end the turn at about one hundred and fifty knots thereabout, and then we can start controlling it more. We've turned a little too tight, so we're just going to uh, cancel that turn just for a second. We can come down to our next full layer of flaps now, and that's going to put a load more drag on the plane. So compensate accordingly with the gas. And the trim, trimming down now. Okay, we're on our final approach now. I've come in a bit skew if, but it doesn't really matter. So it's now a case of getting the right speed for our E bracket, which is there to encompass our path vector. And if we can keep it there all the time, then we'll be on speed and on angle of attack. And as a secondary check, our angle of attack indicator here will confirm the same thing. So let's keep going. So we're just gonna drive our speed down ever so slightly and correct put our path mark on the threshold of the runway and just about there 140 knots seems to be the right speed for us to get on the angle of attack and what I can show is the angle of attack at the bottom of the screen there so you can see that so small deviations in the throttle now Just to uh, make sure our path marker st vector stays within the E bracket. And we're pretty happy there, 139 knots. If we were a lot heavier and we had stores, then uh, to achieve the E bracket, we'd have a higher speed of about 150 knots. And if we were really lighter, we'd be down to about 120 knots. So everything's bang on the money. And we're going to resist the urge to flare up at the last minute as we would do in most um, ah, as we would do in most airfield non-naval aircraft and that's it lovely landing there now I don't know any real Hornet pilots but I do know someone who does and they've said that when they do airfield landings they do actually flare to reduce the impact on the gear um, we didn't do it there obviously and as per the manual you're not supposed to but that's just something from a real pilot but there you go nothing to add to that i hope that helps and see you later